Hello and welcome to ComScience Simplified. If you have done any JavaScript development in recent times, you might have heard about the concept of event loop. You might have also wondered why it's called as a loop and how it relates to events. In this video, we'll learn the details that will help you understand the same and answer these questions. Let us first take a look at the MDN definition. According to this, the event loop is a runtime model which is responsible for executing code, processing events, and executing queued subtasks. It also states that the event loop is a theoretical model based on which JavaScript engines implement the way JavaScript is executed. In order to understand that better, we need to look at three main concepts on which the event loop is dependent. The stack, the heap, and the queue. I know these are the names of popular data structures, but the event loop equivalent of these terms is different. Let's get to them one by one. Let us talk about the stack first. The way the stack comes into the picture is that every function that executes in JavaScript engine forms a frame that is added into the function call stack. Let's understand that with an example. Let us say that we have some code which looks like this. When this code is run and it reaches this line, the first function is pushed into the stack and a stack frame is created which holds references to all the local variables inside of that function. Inside the first function, a call to the second function happens and it is then loaded onto the stack and another stack frame is created. Once the second function completes executing, it returns the result which is 270 to the first function and that frame is popped off the stack. Then the same value is returned from the first function which is also popped off the stack. The next concept that we will look at is the heap. The heap is the name given to a large unstructured region in memory where objects are allocated. This ties in nicely with what we discussed before. That is, if we declare an object inside of a function, the reference to it is stored on the function stack frame, while the actual object is stored on the heap. The next concept that we'll look at is the queue. The queue aspect of the event loop is a message queue, which is a list of messages to be processed. Each message has an associated function that is called in order to handle that message. At some point, the messages in this queue will start getting processed starting with the oldest one. By processing the message, I mean pulling it out of the queue and executing the function associated with it. When the function associated with the message is executed, it is also pushed into the function stack and it is then treated in the same way as any other function thereafter. Hence, any other function invoked inside of it keep getting pushed and popped off the stack as explained before. One important concept to note here is that of run to completion. But before that, drop a like on this video if you are enjoying it so far. Run to completion basically means that there is no concept of preemption wherein some function with a higher priority would be able to stop the current function and run its own code. Neither is there a possibility of another function getting executed on a parallel thread. There is no other way other than the code in the current function running to its end. And that is the reason we see that sometimes when some long synchronous code runs on the main thread, the browser usually hangs and displays the dialog which says a script is taking too long to run. With all that in place, let us now finally get to the concept of the event loop. The event loop is usually some piece of code that looks like this. It synchronously waits for a message to be added onto the message queue if the queue is empty and then processes it once added. If there are multiple messages to be processed, it pulls out the oldest one and executes the function associated with its handler. This in turn adds the function onto the function stack and we know how that story goes ahead. So basically, the event loop can be described as the entity that pulls the appropriate event handler from the message queue and executes it. Now there's one last missing piece in this entire puzzle and that is how are messages added onto the message queue because we did not look into that yet. Let's get to it. As per MDN docs, messages are added to the message queue whenever any event fires and when there's an event handler attached with it. Thus, if there's a button on this screen and there's an on-click listener attached to it, that will get added to the message queue when the button gets pressed. Similar is the case with other browser APIs like set timeout. When we call set timeout, we do so with two arguments. The first one is the function to be executed and the second one is the delay, the minimum delay to be more specific. The API does not guarantee that the function supplied would get executed after the specified number of seconds. Rather, it just adds the function to the message queue when the timeout happens, and the function would still have to wait for any other messages in the queue 
to execute before itself getting executed. This might make you wonder about an interesting scenario. What happens in the case of a set timeout called with 0 seconds as the time? How would that behave? Let me know in the comments section below. And that closes the loop for our event loop discussion. Now we know how all these entities work together smoothly to provide us the seamless event driven experience that we love so much about the language. Hope you liked the video. See you in the next one. Until then, happy learning.